We are currently joined by Dr. Joseph Helbley. He is currently Professor of Engineering and Provost at Dartmouth College. Dr. Helbley, thank you so much for joining us today on this virtual iteration of ASEE TV. Uh, great. Good, good to be with you this afternoon, Roberto. Thanks. So you recently launched within ASCE a meeting of provosts who were previously engineering deans. Can you tell us about the genesis of this meeting and why it's so important? Right, that, that's right. Thanks. And so for many years, I had been part of a group of engineering deans who gathered in Washington uh, every February to work on and discuss public policy issues as part of the public policy colloquium for engineering deans. And when I became provost two years ago, I realized that the work that provosts do is even more connected to the policy realm. And as engineers who would become provost, I thought it would be helpful for us to gather and discuss policy issues that we wrestle with on our campuses and our connection to the national policy making uh, network. And so for that reason, we thought about and proposed to ASAE trying to get the group together. And that was really how the meeting was born. And tell us, why do you think this meeting is important for not just the ASAE community, but in general for, you know, former engineering deans and the society? Well, I think that, you know, as, as provosts and as engineers who become provosts, we're a collection of individuals who are now charged with overseeing both the operations and the financial operations of comprehensive public research and teaching universities. And in those positions, we're all wrestling with issues that both require the quantitative input and expertise that engineers provide, but require understanding where the national higher education landscape is heading. And I, I think for each of us, the provost is a singular position on every university campus. There is not a lot of opportunity to connect with peers and share approaches to dealing with some of these complex policy questions or complex operational questions. There isn't a national gathering of provosts of any kind. And so I think having the group of us get together who have a common engineering, scientific, and quantitative background and perspective in these roles is it's helpful to us. And I think it matters for national educational policymaking. Now, looking ahead, what does the future of this group look like? Well, the reaction to this first gathering that we had in February when we surveyed respondents afterwards was quite, quite positive. We had a mixture of conversations looking at both issues that we were wrestling with and addressing on our own campuses and also looking at some of the national challenges associated with both higher education and with engineering and science research and education in colleges and universities. The group expressed a strong interest in continuing to meet on a regular basis. And so I anticipate that this is something, assuming we are able to gather physically in person in Washington, DC again next year, this is something we intend to do on a regular and annual basis. And now to sort of pivot towards your role as an engineering educator, what do you see the future of engineering education looking like? Well, I, you know, that's a good question, and I'd, I'd answer that question, Roberto, the, the same way I would have five years ago, but I think the emphasis is even stronger now. First, I think it's become even more important for engineers to do some of their design work and their project-based work, their hands-on experiential project-based work in interdisciplinary teams. Engineering as a profession and engineering as an educational approach has become much more integrated across the disciplines, and I think it is of increasing importance, it's even essential now, that chemical engineers, mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, computer engineers, and so on, are learning from and taking classes and working on design projects together. And secondly, I'd say, and I'm a little biased here because I'm at a comprehensive liberal arts research university, but I think the liberal arts elements of an engineer's education are even more important today, more important than they've ever been. For part of it's around learning how to communicate and communicate effectively, communicate technical information effectively with a non-technical audience. But second, I think the liberal arts parts of an engineer's education provide context for the world in which we are designing engineering solutions. And so those elements, I think, have become even more important. But another thing I think that's changed and changing is that engineers and engineering education truly have something to offer to the entire campus. It's hard to imagine the world becoming less technologically focused in the next five to 10 years. And I think engineers have an opportunity and even an obligation to develop, to develop courses and curriculum for the non-engineering major on every campus. Well, Dr. Helbley, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today on ASEE TV. Great. Thanks so much for your interest and look forward to seeing you in person at the next ASEE meeting, hopefully next year. Take care.